Welcome to Paris, a state of mind. Join us as we talk about the good, the bad, the ins, the outs of property rentals and purchases in and around Paris. We'll have topics for renters, owners, and visitors, share questions we are regularly asked, and more. My name is Gail Boisclair of Perfectly Paris, and my co host is Marie Pistinier of Lokim Paris. Be a part of it. Both of us are proud members of the SPLM, the first representative. Body of Furnished Rental Professionals. Marie, it's so great to be back in the studio recording another episode for our friends. How are you today? I'm very fine, thank you. How are you doing? The last time you were a little bit overwhelmed by all the, the information you had. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. I, and it's probably not going to be any better today because I was so sure I understood everything. And then you said, dun, 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 dun. not quite, Gail. <laughs> well, and so I think today you're going to tell me, we talked about how to find an apartment, et cetera, in Paris, but now you're going to tell me what the heck that I have to do in terms of paperwork and so on and so forth. So let me ask you my first question. I've done all the things and I think that maybe I found an apartment that I want. So how do I prepare my file as a renter, a tenant? So you do have, you can start the file and you, you can prepare it before even ask for, a, for an apartment. It's important to have all the documents prepared. Because if really the apartment suits you, you have to, to send and to shoot your file as soon as possible. So it's very important. And so for that, you have to, to gather documents that will uh, give the owners or the agent uh, the, the confirmation that you are able to pay the rent and that your incomes are enough in order to cover the rent and your everyday life. So in terms of documents, okay, so I would need to have obviously some, I don't know, proof that I am who I say I am. So identity, something to confirm my identity. Yeah, sure. You have to, to have an ID. This is important. First, it would be about you. So your ID and the purpose of your stay. Are you a student? Are you uh, working here? Are you on a training moment? Are you here for anything that proves why you are here? And what are the, the incomes you are going to get while you are here? So obviously, when you are a, t um, a student, you are not going to get any incomes. If so, then you will need to, to have some additional uh, information and eventually a, a guarantor. A guarantor. Okay. So, okay. So I get my information, proving who I am, stating what I'm doing, and essentially why I want to rent an apartment, proof that I can pay for it. But if I can't pay for it, if I don't earn enough money, or if you say I'm a student, I can get a guarantor, you said. So like, what do you mean? What is a guarantor? A guarantor would be someone who is going to vouch for you. Like uh, he's going to commit on the lease uh, at the same level as you. And, um, and basically it says if you have any trouble to pay the rent, then the owner can ask the guarantor to pay the rent for you. And then the, the guarantor do doesn't have a choice because he confirmed he was going to vouch for you. So he cannot uh, skip this uh, responsibility. So it's important in France, uh, we, we, we are used to ask for a guarantor because there is a lot of... Uh, of things that protect the tenants. So owner from the beginning are asking for a lot of documents, documentation. Then after you are uh, free to go once you, you have the green light. <laughs> uh, but it's important. And it's sometimes complicated for people who are not French to get a guarantor. Because most of the time, if there is any issue, we are going to ask this guarantor. So we need to be able to reach him. So most of the time when the guarantor is not in France, then owners and maybe sometimes agents who are not used to work with international clients may not accept a guarantor who is not within French. Hmm. So what happens if that's the case, if uh, me, for example, a Canadian wants to rent an apartment and I have my dad in Canada who want, who agrees to be my guarantor. What if that is not accepted? Are there any other ways for me to have a guarantor? Sure. If you don't have, um, if the agent or the owner don't accept, doesn't accept, then uh, you can find a third party company who are going to vouch for you. 
then you will be, in fact, uh, you are going to send them all your documentation. So like your ID and your, and they can also accept documents that, that I cannot ask, for example, as an agent. Uh, you are not supposed to send an agent or the owners like your bank details. This is com considered as a, not legal to ask or even to use it as a as a way to to see if you are able to pay the rent. But when you pass through these kind of uh, third party risk uh, company, third party, sorry, uh, then you can uh, there are insurance, so they can receive like an, I don't know, like uh, life insurance. They can see bank details, like saving accounts. They can see the details of your of you and your dad's. And with all those d data, they are going to send you like a document who says, okay, up to this rent this amount, then we are going to cover for any rent, unpaid rent, and eventually uh, damage it that can occur. So this is like a um 100% safe for the owner to accept you in that case because they have like a, an insurance company who is vouching for you and say, okay, if she doesn't pay the rent, then you just have to ask us and then we'll pay for her. Oh, so that's good. Mm. And I had no idea that an agency couldn't ask for banking details. Well, I've never asked any of my renters for banking details. I've never had to, uh, so it's never come up. But I didn't know that legally you're not allowed asking for that. Good to know. Yeah, agents are not allowed to ask, and I have often clients who who send that to me, so I, I received it. So sometimes I, I see it, but I it's not something I can use even to, to I cannot say to the owner, okay, I have checked uh, his account and he's loaded. So it's not something <laughs> that I can say. It has to be uh, to be based on the the work contract, which is of course one of the document. Also, we usually ask for your previous uh, incomes, like the l'impôt sur le revenu, for example, uh, but. But this is mainly when you are already in France and that you have been taxed on your French incomes, for example. And one of the things that you have to know is that when you have a Warren a guarantor, a French one, for example, you can be a not French and have a French person who is nice enough to, to be your guarantor. <laughs> uh, when you have that, uh, we usually ask the same document to the guarantor, which will be like the, th the last three pay slips, uh, his ID, and also the, the impost sur le revenu, so the tax details for the previous year. Any information on the guarantor being like uh, an owner himself, like tax foncier or thing like that, would be uh, information that can um, uh, confirm and that can uh, like uh, uh, build your case, if I can uh, take this exp expression. Yeah, I get it. In other words, to make sure that you've got like someone solid supporting you if for some reason you can't pay your rent or you're like a lot of people and living in COVID times and all of a sudden you don't have a job anymore. Yeah, mm. unfortunately. Well, we, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, absolutely. But even though some people who, for example, let's take like the example of someone who doesn't have a job. It's very complicated in France because it's, uh, as I was saying, usually we have a lot of um, low details that are really protecting the tenant, which is a good thing. But in order to access to these statues, then of course the owners have to um, to be reassured. But uh, if you cannot have a guarantor, or for example, if the guarantor doesn't earn enough money, passing through companies who are uh, the third party may be a solution because, for example, you don't have any monthly incomes, but you have like saving account with enough money. They are, they are going to be able to, to vouch for you and say, okay, I'm ready to, to do that, even though the person doesn't have a, like a regular monthly income. It's a new type of, of insurances. Usually, this kind of insurances were previously asked by the owners and paid by the owners. But usually, if you want it to be uh, uh, like matching the requirements, the requirements of this insurance, You've had to have like uh, guarantors and a lot of uh, of money on the side, and uh, you usually you have to be French and to be there for like a year lease. Like below, it's not it's not possible. And now you have those companies, and I know two or three of them who are doing this. They are really open to international clientele, and they are very flexible. Of course, there is a cost for that. It's not a free uh, it's not a free pass. That's what I was gonna say. There's no yeah. free ride, no, is there? No, unfortunately. But it's a good way to, to secure a place and to reassure because it can really be complicated. Uh, either you work with a company that is not used to work with non-French people, it happens, even though in Paris it's rare, but it can happen. <laughs> or even owners who are uh, very happy to have an international client, but sometimes it's complicated. If I have a Japanese client myself, even though, 
I'm very open to international clients and I'm very flexible on the conditions. If I have a Japanese person, I don't speak Japanese. I'm not able to read the documents. We do have a Korean girl at the office, so we can accept without any problem the Korean people because we have someone who can rent, read the, the, all the details. But, uh, but yes, when I have a client who speak a language we don't, it's a very good way to, to secure the, the booking. Oh, right, because then it would be up to the company acting as the guarantor to have the translation of the documents or what have you and things like that. Yeah, I don't read Japanese either. I love the food, though. <laughs> I made miso soup this week. Anyway, getting off topic here. We'll be right back with Paris, a state of mind, after a word from our sponsors. When former college roommates Joanne and Britt join up for a hike in the Colorado Rockies on Joanne's 25th birthday, they're prepared for a light, fun, four-hour walk culminating in delicious birthday barbecue. You ready? Britt, are you putting on lipstick? So what? So we're about to go on a four-hour hike up the Rockies. So? Mother Nature will appreciate the effort. But when they decide to follow a mysterious arrow in the woods, things take a turn for the bizarre. Hey, wait, this rock has an arrow painted on it. Was that yours? I don't remember an arrow. Should we follow it? Maybe it's a sign. We don't want to get lost, though. There's only this one trail. Well, let's just take a little peek. What could possibly go wrong? With not much more than lipstick, dental floss, dental floss? and their own senses of humor to get them through. Will they survive against Mother Nature, unexplained occurrences, and an abandoned town that may not be abandoned after all? Babes in the Woods, an original comedic mystery series. Wednesdays on Paris Underground Radio. Hi, welcome to Wine Dine Caroline's Happy Hour. I'm Caroline Connor, a wine expert living in Lyon, France, where I am otherwise known as Wine Dine Caroline. Now, this isn't your average wine podcast. You can join me at Happy Hour, where I'll be meeting with friends, new and old, to hear a funny, stupid, or just all-out ridiculous story from their life. And then I'll pair a wine with it. Join us for belly laughs, silliness, and lots of love. Cheers! And now back to Paris, a state of mind. <laughs> so I've got my guarantor. Uh, I'm working with a company and because my dad's not acceptable because he's in Canada. So I guess all of this, you said that I have to prepare this before I go into the apartment. Yes, it's, it's always easier. First, because you can send your file or at least uh, describe your profile to the agent who is going to show you the apartment. And if you find a nice person, she, this person will tell you exactly what is missing. Like, wh what do you have to do to build your case and to make sure that if the apartment suits you, then it's going to work? Because what is the time, if you spend your time visiting, viewing apartments, and in the end, having someone to say to you, okay, it's not going to work because you don't have a, one document is missing and someone else just applies. So you are going to waste a lot of time. So it's very good if you can, even if you are not really in France yet, to, to start to build your documents. It's not like a hundred documents. It's really few documents that can build and confirm that you are able to pay the rent or that you have someone who can help you pay the rent in case you failed in that because it's, things can happen. Okay. What I'm going to do is when we finish up the show, I can put in the show notes, the list of the documents that people will need. So then our listeners can look at the show notes to find out because yeah. I don't know, they probably don't know. I, I, I probably don't even know. Hey, and I'm supposed to be a professional. Good grief. Okay. Well, now imagine I found the apartment of my dreams. I've got my uh, file, my dossier all together, and uh, I give them everything. What's next? Like, what should I expect uh, regarding the lease and all of that? What happens now? 
So once you say you send your dossier and it's accepted, if it's not accepted, so you have to track it because some people are following several uh, leads, like uh, usually on the agent side, sometimes it happens like people are just giving me their dossier and then they, maybe they did that with three different apartments and maybe some something else come up and that a better one and then I don't have a tenant anymore. But it, it works the same on, on the other side. Not that if an agent tells you, okay, you are, you are accepted. Normally, if you have a, if you are in front of a professional, he, he's not going to tell you, okay, no, sorry, I said that, but it's not true. So this is not going to happen. But if you want it, you have to follow up to make sure that, okay, they read your file. Did they give the information to the owner? And then, uh, what can we do? And when can we sign the lease? The lease should be sent to you. I think we, we mentioned that already, probably in French, maybe with some English translation, but we will, which will be probably not official translation. Once you agree on the lease, and I, I really suggest that you, you read the lease before you sign it electronically. Uh, now we do that a lot. Uh, so, and sometimes when you sign, we just, uh, it's always good to check and to verify that there is no mistake on your name, on your address, even on the, on the amounts and on, on everything. So once you will have approved the lease, then it will be sent for signature electronically or physically if, if it's, the more convenient things. And then you will be asked probably to, to prepare some payments, like the rent for the months to come and the damage deposit. And you should definitely uh, set up the things to make an état des lieux, which will be like the state and the inventory, even though inventory can be done also a bit earlier, the list, inventory being the list of all the items in the apartment. Uh, and it's good to, and this is also a, a moment to consider uh, seriously and not to say, okay, I'm signing the lease. I have the keys and I send the documents and think the apartment is in a good state. It's very important to, to spend some time at the Etat des Lieux to make sure that everything is, uh, is on track and that uh, there is uh, not going to be any surprise. Even though you can still um, raise the t issues in the next few days after after you checked in, yeah, I always tell people with the état des lieux, which there is no English translation, but it's I guess we'll say the state of the apartment, um, including the walls, the floors, the ceilings, the fixtures, everything. I always say it's really important to note, like if there's a mark on the wall, that there's a mark on the wall at the top left corner in the kitchen because you never want somebody turning around and saying, hey, you put a mark on my wall. I have to repaint because so many foreigners hear horror stories of their um, rental deposits being held uh, because of the state of the apartment when they give it back. Speaking of which, just going slightly back, uh, when you talked about having to send money for a rental contract, what is kind of the normal thing, like the first month's rent plus a security deposit? Yes, this will be the, the, the classic. The first month, or if you arrive like in the 15th of the month, prob probably a prorated amount of the, of the rent, unless you are going to pay each 15th of the month. And then the, in, in furnished apartment, it will be a two months damage deposit. When it's an uh, unfurnished apartment, it will be only one month. But unfurnished apartment will be like a three-year lease. So it's a, it's another type of commitment. So that means that you will bring your furniture and you will take care of everything. But which means also that the état des lieux set of the apartment will be much easier and faster <laughs> than, than on a furnished apartment. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my goodness. And I actually hate état des lieux. It's so, it's like... <sighs> tedious. Anyway, mm. probably the renters hate it just as much as I do. I'm sure. <laughs> no, it's, it's the same for me. I think that état des lieux is a, is a moment where everyone wants to have it uh, ended as soon as possible, but it's really important to, to, to check it. And usually now, more and more, uh, I will not talk about owners because I don't know what is a, what are the rules, but with um, a service provider or uh, agencies, most of the time you will have like Pictures taken and uh, things on on app that that allows uh, very easily we can easily see what are the problem what are the issue and everything and of course if there is something that I'm um, like missing that that you realize in the next few days it's very important to tell it as soon as possible to take pictures and to say okay this is not working one thing for example is the heat. Uh, when you have electric heat, or even when you have like a, like a, a shodia, uh, usually uh, if you arrive, heater. 
gas heater. Here we, here we go. For example, if you check in in July, of course, you are not going to check all the, like, uh, to plug all the heaters, the electric heaters, and wait for, for the room to warm up, right? So you, <laughs> we usually, uh, even though it's, it's not in the next few days, we usually, uh, normally owners or flat managers should accept when like mid October, you say, okay, one of the heater is not working. I'm not responsible for that. So you have, you have to do something about that. So, yeah. So this is yeah, the thing that you terrible. can do a little after the, the état des lieux. But for anything you find, sometimes I have clients who said to me, like, they check out and they said, oh, okay, the toaster is not working, but it wasn't working when, when I checked in. Okay, but if you don't tell me, I cannot. I don't know. How do we know? So I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, who is going to pay for the for the new toaster, right? That's a pet peeve of mine, actually. So while we're talking about this, everybody out there, a pet peeve of Gail's: do not come to an apartment and say at the end or after you've already left. Oh, but the coffee maker never worked. Well, how the heck do we know? Well, when you come in, it's not like we're making you toast and coffee. If we don't know something is broken, we can't fix it. Exactly. Tell something straight away if something's not right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we have, we have things like, okay, the washing machine wasn't working, but it's been like six months. So how, how do you... <laughs> <laughs> do you do the, yeah. your laundry, right? No, so it's right. But it's important to really in the next 10 days after you check in that you really, if there is anything broken, then you you, you let the, the agent or the owners know or the, the, the flat managers know. It's really important. We'll be right back with Paris, a state of mind after a word from our sponsors. What bra are you wearing right now? Whether you're smiling from ear to ear because you love your bra or whether you winced because you're wearing, yet again, something you'd rather not. Tune into Paris Undressed, the podcast that goes behind the scenes of the lingerie capital of the world. Hi, I'm Kate Kemp Griffin, author and host of Paris Undressed. From boudoir to the street, we'll explore the art of making and wearing French lingerie. We'll meet the designers and brands shaping our bodies and talk to fascinating people about femininity, sensuality, and sexuality. We'll share bra stories, secrets, desires, hopes, and dreams. This is the ultimate special occasion. So put on your favorite bra and tune into Paris Undressed, Tuesdays on Paris Underground Radio. If I ask you what it's like to be a Parisian writer, what do you imagine? Drinking noisette after noisette in a noisy cafe? Jotting down lines in your bedside journal while your lover fetches you fresh croissant? Stumbling down the streets overflowing with prose and red wine like Hemingway? Well, now's your chance to find out. My name is Jennifer Garrity, and I'm host of the Story Time in Paris podcast. In each episode, I chat with a writer with a French connection. The twist? The questions come from you, the writer's biggest fans and followers. Then our beloved writers will read us an excerpt from their books. So cozy up with a noisette, a croissant, or whatever's your pleasure, and settle in for Storytime in Paris on Paris Underground Radio. And now back to Paris, a state of mind. And I guess that kind of falls into the next thing, which is insurance, you know, for maybe damages, water leaks, what have you. Uh, So as a renter, do I need insurance? Because wouldn't the owner already have insurance for the apartment? Yeah, the owners actually have uh, have an insurance. We call that PNO. So it's propriétaire non occupant. So it's when owners are uh, not uh, living in the uh, in the premises. Propriétaire non occupant. Piano, like not like the playing piano. Do 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 do. Yes, piano. Uh, so they have an insurance, but this is insurance. For example, if there is a cupboard like fall on your head. And uh, and this is an issue. Then the owner insurance will take care of that. But if you break something inside the apartment, or if you cause, for example, you you let the water uh, of the bath uh, overflowed <laughs> overflowed the the bathroom, for example, then you are responsible. So it's your home insurance who are going to take care of that. So you do need what we call the um, uh, assurance multi risk habitation. So it's a multi risks um, habitat uh, insurance. Okay. Yeah. How would you say that? Insurance. Uh, multi-risk apartment insurance. I don't think we use multi-risk in English, but I think people know 
what that means. What it means. Yeah. So this will cover you for, like, for example, for the leak, uh, for the water, for fire also, even for explosion. And it can also ensure you, it's, it's important to see um, if they also cover you for, the, for example, theft. Uh, if someone tr tried to break in your apartment and, for example, like ruin the locks, it's important to have an insurance which will cover you for that because it can be very expensive and it's important to have this. And about the the water damage, it's always included in the insurance. the The good thing now for the the tenant, which is less for the, the for the agent, uh, is that when, for example, you from the apartment above, you have a, a leak and uh, and some damages in your apartment. Before it was you who had, as a tenant, who had to take care of that, like the follow up with the insurances, declare to your own insurance, and then check with the upstairs neighbors and everything. On furnished apartment now, uh, it's not the, it's not anymore the case. They change the insurance laws and everything. So now, if you are bearing like uh, the water coming from the common area or from the, your upstate neighbors, for example, then it will be the owner's insurance we are going to take over in order to do the repairs. But the repairs will be like the walls, the paint and everything, not your own belongings. Your belongings will be bared by, the, by your insurance. Okay. And you do have to have a home insurance like well, upon check-in. I mean, no home insurance, no keys uh, after. So it's it's really important so to have that. So it's a legal requirement, yeah. Yeah, and it's easy to get. Like you can have a you you do you can do that online. You can of course ask your agent. Sometimes they can uh, put you in contact with some insurance they are used to work with, uh, or you can find some online. If you are uh, some of them are uh, English speaking companies, but most of them will be French. But if you do have some some knowledge, you can easily and it's like instantly. It's like you you book it, you pay, and you have directly your uh, your documents. You don't have to do like uh, that uh, three months ahead. <laughs> yeah, I did my for my apartment uh, that I'm living in. I actually used uh, direct assurance direct insurance and it was like super speedy online in out immediately got my paperwork and it was great so like but why do we need all these documents that's ki kind of a lot we need to give uh all of our personal information to fill out a file when we even want to get into an apartment then maybe we need a guarantor and then we need to sign all this and that to get the keys and like the state of the apartment and now insurance why so much so you have to, I know that in some country, check-in and check-out out are very easy. Sometimes clients are, are saying to me, okay, I don't understand. In Belgium, we can sign a contract on this, like, and in five minutes get the keys. Like, it's not a problem. Or in US, it can be this way or also. Because I know that it's, uh, it, in France, we love paperwork and we have a lot. But it's also because the, the tenants are usually very protected. And uh, that means protected in the way that once they are inside the apartments, they have a lot of rights. There is a lot of duties as well, but there is a lot of rights that a, a tenant can have. And uh, and owners are usually uh, worried about having someone who can stay in and not pay the rent because it happens. And if so, uh, it's sometimes complicated to make sure that the people are going to, to be out. And I know that in other countries, people can be throwing out uh, on the exact same day. So it's... It's really, very, really different. So owners are, um, and even agents uh, can be a little, um, a little worried about the, the situation. If the person seems to have like a, a light file uh, or no, no one who can vouch for them in case there is an issue, that's why we, we, we ask for all those documents, uh, mm -hmm. like the ID, the incomes, uh, insurance, of course, but this is a, like a national law uh, and it's, it's very important. But once... Once the tenant is is on site, uh, then he's protected. We cannot uh, uh, put him out of the apartment this way. It depends on the lease. It depends on on many things. And we cannot say from a day like you didn't pay the rent on the first, on the second, you are you are out. This is not working this way in France. Mm, of course not. Administration paperwork. <laughs> Let's drag it out. <laughs> so, am I all set now? Does that mean I can move into my apartment? If you paid your rent, yes, sure. <laughs> you can check in. <laughs> rent and, dam and damage deposit, yes. This is important as well. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, that was great. Yeah. Thank you. So, 
Did you learn a lot today? Well, as with every talk, I really did. I guess I realized that there really is a lot of paperwork that I have to put together. And like I said, I'll put it in the show notes for everybody. So we have a list of what they need to uh, put in their their rental file for an apartment. So we've got to get all our, all our ducks in a row for our own personal information. And if we need financial support uh, because our earnings aren't enough or we're a student to to pay the rent, then we need to make sure we have a guarantor. If our father lives in Canada like mine, then we can use a company to do that. And then once we get to the apartment, we have to make sure that we've noted any type of damages or anything that's not quite right If we for the etadilio, which is like the check on the apartment. Uh, in terms of if it says on the list that there's four forks and there's only three, should we mention that? Yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> Just this kidding. Is, it's no, probably you, a little thing. Can, but some people will do. So, like, do as you, you, you'll do uh, usually. Because, uh, <laughs> sometimes, yes, I, I know that sometimes we have like 12, uh, 12 fork and yeah, what, what do we do? One is missing. Am I going to charge the tenant for the fork? Can I find the exact same fork as the one that was in the apartment? No. Yeah, I know. I I don't I don't either. I think that's so silly. Some things are just ridiculous. But yeah, I think that I've learned all of that. The um, and I also learned the importance of insurance, uh, both from an owner's perspective and from a renter's perspective. So I think I get it. I think I understand, and I can't wait to move into my apartment. And oh wait, I can't decorate it just the way that I want. I can't put holes in the walls, can I? This is a tricky question because if you do, um, sometimes owners all put that in the contract, say, okay, you cannot put a, you cannot, uh, yes, do any holes in the in the walls. But sometimes, and, uh, by the way, the- audience, when I say a hole in the wall, it doesn't mean that you take a sledgehammer and make a hole. We're just talking <laughs> about a teeny <laughs> tiny nail to hang up your family photo because you miss them so much. <laughs> exactly. But you are supposed, once it's done, you are supposed to, when you leave, to cover it and like to, to repair it and to put it that back as it was. Of course, when the, if the, the wall has a certain color and if there is any like cracks in the wall, it can be complicated to get. Then it depends, but it may be another topic on since how long was the painting done and is it like vetust or not? Uh, it's, uh, it's a bit complicated, but it's true that Owners will expect, especially in furnished apartment, when you are here for a, a specific time, to do not have a like a total change of the of the apartment. But I've heard that now, even though you want to paint like a wall in another color, legally we cannot say to you no, but you do have to put it back the way it was when you check out. All right. Well, I think I'm going to do some psychedelic painting soon in my apartment and <laughs> and uh, I'll just make sure it's uh, back the way it was. Well, thank you very yeah. much, Marie. That was really great. And I hope that everybody else found it as informative as I did. I hope so. Thank you again. And uh, um, be reassured, we don't ask for DNA test yet. Oh, thank you. God, <laughs> I thought you would actually, and no, like uh, signing over your firstborn just in case there's no. a problem. Uh, okay, well that's no. not bad then. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes people uh, should we mention the pets? Oh yeah, I never thought of pets. Wait, hold that thought. Yes, pets. Do you mean small children or do you mean real animals? <laughs> no, I mean real animals. Uh, like people, usually when you, I shouldn't say that, but uh, yes, don't ask if pets are allowed because most of the time it will not be. But uh, legally we cannot, um, if, if you arrive in Paris, you don't have any pet and then you buy a dog or a cat or you rescue him in the street, we cannot say to you, okay, you are not allowed to have a, a pet in your apartment. So don't need to send, sometimes, sometimes we receive that like picture of the family, f- picture of the pet and say, okay, my dog is hypoallergenic, so it's, <laughs> it will be no problem. We have the, like the claw, right, for the cats. People yeah. are just taking them out. Oh, that's disgusting. Ouch. And they say oh, that, gross. okay, my, my cat is not going to, to ruin your couch because he doesn't have any, any claw anymore. So I don't want to know. <laughs> it's it's and better also, not to say. I don't think I want to know people that declaw their cats because I think that's inhumane. 
Yeah, it's, it's weird. Don't, don't tell me. Too much yeah. information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so have a good day, Gail. Thank you. You, you too, soon. Marie. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you soon on Paris, a state of mind. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for listening to Paris, a state of mind, featuring Gail of Perfectly Paris and Marie of Lokim, both who are founding members of the SPLM. Paris, a state of mind is produced by Paris Underground Radio. The music, Jazz in Paris, is by Media Right Productions. For more information on this show and others, go to Paris Underground Radio.com.